Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 news. We're back with more Vampire Coast info. Yes, indeed, we've got a roster reveal, folks. So, in the background, you're going to be, see, be seeing footage of the official CA roster reveal. I'm going to have a link to it down in the description below. Would definitely recommend you guys go watch the entire thing. Um, I'm not going to go into as much detail, and I mean, obviously, they have, like, the character artists there talking about, uh, you know, the thinking behind them, and since this is very much, uh, uh, you know, you could argue that Norsko is sort of a CA-created faction, but this is very much a CA-created faction, so I would definitely recommend you guys go watch the whole thing, listen to what they have to say to kind of hear about, uh, you know, how it was made, the inspiration behind it, and everything. Um, there is also a written post, for those of you who just want to read it, um, that's also available that goes into some detail, which they did miss on the stream, so I'm going to be mostly using that as a reference in my video here. We're going to be going through everything, um, you know, all the information that's been revealed so far, and I'm going to kind of, uh, do a bit of theory crafting, maybe talk about how these different units can maybe be used in different ways, and sort of how I see the play style of the faction as a whole. So let's get to it. Uh, Luther Harkon, the first legendary lord, of course, who we saw prominently in the trailer. He's the dude with the sword and pistol. He's a vampire, but he has no capacity to cast spells. Uh, that being said, he does have a high magic resistance, and he uh, will ha also have an area of effect magic resistance uh, aura. He has a pistol, which he can fire on the move. His rapier suggests his splash attack profile will be similar to Sigvald of Wolfric. You know, he's a duelist character. Um, he's going to be pretty quick and have medium to high armor. And yeah, uh, that's Luther Harkon. He will also have a Terrorgeist mount, so he'll be able to fly around and shoot. We'll have to see, um, probably will be a front arc of fire similar to like the, uh, the Glady on a dragon, for example, or Princess on a dragon. Uh, but we'll have to see. Moving on, we've got Count Noctilus as the second legendary lord. He's going to be the tank lord, and he is also a spellcaster, so a bit of a hybrid there. Uh, he's got uh, a halberd when he's on foot, so he's got anti-large armor piercing. And his spells will be a mix of vampires and shadows. So they didn't say specifically which spells he has access to, but uh, a mix of vampires and shadows, which is going to be a particularly powerful combo depending on what spells they give him. Like if he has, for example, Invocation of the Heck, uh, let's say Enfeebling Foe, uh, Dance Macabre, maybe Summon Zombies, Wind of Death, and of shades like that would be ridiculous you know so we'll see uh, what what mix he has but um two of the best lores of magic in the game certainly um he is also relatively high mass heavily armored he has the ability to regenerate and uh his mount option is the necrofex colossus so it also gives him kind of like an artillery type lord a monster lord mount so it should be very interesting Third legendary lord is Arnes Assault Spite. She's actually, a, 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 I guess, a human mutant. Um, she's going to be carrying a polearm as well. She's a bit more of a, <clears throat> a control type character, it seems. It's a little bit hard to say based on her abilities here. But uh, she does have anti-large AP. She's got a halberd. Uh, above average speed. She's got low HP and armor, but good melee defense. She also has a large area of effect attack, making her good against... Uh, infantry as well so it's a little bit strange that she has anti-large AP but is also has an attack uh, animation that focuses on dealing with infantry we'll see kind of how that actually plays out in terms of the battle I'm curious but she also has a mount of the uh, uh, rotting Promethean which is not the current thick boy you're seeing on screen right now the full-size crab but it's actually the the next size down um, but I'd imagine that would give her pretty good armor and you know the attributes of the crab which we'll get to in just a minute uh, she also has a net ability, so this is going to be very interesting because the Vampire Coast, as you guys will see, is very much a shooting faction. Uh, having a, a net, a hard snare ability, can be potentially extremely powerful. We see the Glady is one of the most common picks for the Wood Elves simply because of that. So I'm thinking Aranessa, because of that hard net, will be a very popular pick for the Vampire Coast. We'll have to see. But uh, she also has good base physical resistance to represent her agility. Uh, we'll see if that carries over to the mount. But, uh, next up we've got Silostra Direfin, so this is the uh, Banshee Lord, <laughs> the first, I, I guess technically a Siren Lord, or a Sirene as they're called in Warhammer, but uh, yeah, she is a, a Creative Assembly's, I guess, first 
created legendary lord that's all them. You know, if she's a, I guess, a Bretonian singer who drowned at sea, and she was just so full of herself, so vain, and so willful that she came back to bring vengeance upon Ulthwan, where she was supposed to be performing when her ship sank. Um, and yeah, she's going to be a caster for the new lore, the lore of the deeps. They didn't talk too much about the lore other than saying that it has all new spells, so I'm very curious to see uh, what they've come up with, certainly. Um, obviously, being ethereal, she has great physical resistance, but uh, no armor and mediocre melee defense, and probably relatively low HP as well. Uh, of course, like I said, powerful caster. Uh, let's see. She, it says here, she speciali specializes in using songs to control enemy movement speed, buff her own units, and damage enemies. So I'm curious to see what that actually entails, if that's like bound abilities, or if that's like bound abilities on her melee attack, if she has like splash attacks that particularly knock people around quite easily. It'll be interesting to see what exactly that means. Um, but uh, also here, she'll be able to summon a Spectral Bretonian Cavalry. So. Uh, I believe in the in the uh, other page they had it was uh, they said it was knights errant, but I'm not 100% on that. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, she'll be interesting. Another caster lord as well, and the first uh, ethereal lord we've ever had. And her mount is going to be the thick boy crab, the big boy. So uh, the current smaller crab, that's the one for Aranessa. The bigger one we saw before, that's the one that she's going to have for a mount. So uh, let's see. They did also show, I believe, in one of the segments that she can recruit a um, ethereal Bretonian paladin. And assuming, I mean, this should be a custom battle roster that they're using with this roster reveal, so hopefully that'll make its way into multiplayer as well. That would be a cool addition for her faction to set her faction apart, make give them something a little more unique. Um, but in terms of the generic lords, we've got two types. A uh, both both types are uh, caster lords they have either vampires death or deeps and one the male is a melee version and the other is a hybrid melee ranged version so um, obviously vampire is one of the strongest lores of magic in the game so this alone makes this faction quite viable in a number of different ways um, we'll have to see exactly how those abilities synergize with a different roster but death is certainly very strong and deeps we haven't seen but i'm assuming a brand new lore of magic you know with the power curve of the game it's going to be pretty pretty strong we'll have to see but uh yeah i mean having one with more of a melee focus and one with more of a ranged focus nothing new we've seen that from the wood elves on so uh yeah good to see there and we also have a vampire fleet captain this is the hero version uh no melee ranged uh hybrid only a, a melee only hybrid at least on this roster unless they just left it out but uh uh, yeah, also access to the same lores, Vampire, Death, Deeps, so you get the heroic version, you know, in case you bring, like, uh, Arnesso or Luther Harkon. You've got the Gunnery White, so uh, this is a good time to talk about the army-wide ability for the, uh, I guess, not technically army-wide, but the, the army ability, if you will, uh, for the Vampire Coast, Extra Powder. So if your units are above a certain ammo threshold, they'll actually, actually get more missile damage. Uh, they didn't go into specifics about the, de the details of the numbers, but uh, the Gunnery White has an ability where he replenishes the ammo of nearby missile units, so I'm going to imagine that you're always going to want to bring at least one if not two gunnery whites to provide that extra powder buff to make sure that key missile units stay above that threshold so that you're really getting the best value from that extra powder um you know very very good support hero we'll see if he has any other support uh you know support buffs uh he does have a missile attack he says he's accurate for a zombie and i believe in the roster reveal they showed he does have a handgun and yeah, going to be a very key character to the playstyle, which we'll get to in just a minute here. And then the last hero is the Mournghul Haunter. This is the monster hero, Mournghuls, as we'll see in a minute. They have Vanguard stock, high AP anti-infantry damage. They regenerate. Uh, they do have low armor. Um, I would imagine they're, you know, they they <laughs> they look unarmored completely in the uh, in the. Uh, uh, Whatever this roster reveal here, that when they show them, you'll see they have they kind of look like cryptors. You can kind of see the one over on the side there, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, they look completely unarmored. So we'll have to see what their actual values are in game. But <clears throat> I'd imagine very very low armor, and uh, they do have large mass, a powerful charge, 
And yeah, it should be a very interesting unit. A stock Vanguard monster is always a, a tough, tough opponent to deal with. But uh, next up, we're going to be going into the Zombie Pirates. So we've got Zombie Pirate Deckhands. This is just the basic version. Uh, the Deckhands mob equipped with dual swords. Zombie Pirates will be the backbone of most uh, mid-tier coast armies. Um, they sit somewhere between Skeleton Warriors and Empire Swordsmen in the power curve. So they're going to be much superior to, you know, your typical Vampire Coast zombies. Uh, what they said in the stream is that they're not necessarily more skilled, they're just better equipped. And uh, they, we also have another variant here, Zombie Pirate Deckhands with pole arms, which is quite useful to have. A chaff unit with pole arms is always, always good. Anti-large AP probably will have crap stats, but anti-large AP in and of itself, especially with access to, again, uh, something like like Dance Macabre from the lore of vampires to buff them up. You, if you have a big blob of these guys, all with anti-large AP, and you juice them up with a ton of melee attack, I'm sure they can take down some high-value targets for great value, so I'm very much looking forward to using zombies with pole arms. <laughs> I, the vampire counts are just green with envy right now. I'm sure they would love that, but nonetheless, we're going to be moving on. We've got zombie pirate gunnery mobs. Um, these guys come in a pistol variant, which is non-AP. They can fire while moving, but not in 360. Uh, they have a rifle version, which has AP, obviously. No fire while moving. Um, they're not super accurate, um, but they are more accurate than the pistols. Um, we've also got hand cannon version. This is a, a short range, sort of like a blunderbuss, like a shotgun type attack with multi-shot um, armor piercing. Uh, it says here, excel at firing into mass infantry ranks. Um, yeah, also has have significant knockback, giving a player, giving the player a tool for disrupting enemy charges. So should be a pretty powerful unit. We've also got bombers, which is uh, you know I guess these guys like shoot like blasting charges kind of. Except I'm we'll, we'll see how they actually work, but I'm imagining that's what it'll sort of be like, but more powerful. Um, and then we've got the Depth Guard. So we've got two uh, variants of Depth Guard. This is the sole kind of elite infantry option. We've got, so it's all zombies, and then you immediately jump up to Depth Guard. So there's really no mid-tier infantry for the Vampire Coast. Um, Depth Guard do come in two variants, Pole Arms and uh, Sword and, let's see, Sword and Hook Hand? That sounds pretty cool. But uh, let's see, they have less, slightly less durability than Grave Guard, but bring more damage to the table. And they will be vulnerable to missile fire due to lack of shield, I thought. They just, oh no, a sword and hook hand. Oh, my apologies. Oh, okay, so no shield on them. And then, of course, the polearm variant, uh, anti-large AP. They said it's a side grade, not necessarily an upgrade. So we'll see if that's actually true. And then we've got uh, scurvy dogs. These are essentially dire wolves. Sirens are going to be similar to Cairn Race, but a little bit different. Uh, they're relatively fast moving. They're obviously uh, ethereal, have high physical resistance as a result. Um, they are vulnerable to magic damage. They also have magic attacks and they have AP damage. And in the in the roster reveal, they mentioned something about some debuff. Um, I think it was a melee attack debuff um, that they have bound so that, that when they hit, they'll, uh, they'll debuff you. So we'll see um, exactly what that entails, but certainly sounds like an interesting unit. You know, having a, a ta uh, ethereal tar pit can be useful, although there's a lot of magic damage floating around. That being said, with Luther Harkon's Area of Effect Magic Resistance ability, you might see a lot of Sirens with Luther Harkon, I would imagine. Depending on, especially depending on what their debuff is, if somebody tries to dive Harkon, the Sirens can then move in and debuff, as well as having the AP damage to support, especially if you have, <coughs> excuse me, again, a caster with vampires nearby, you throw out an overcast Dance Macabre again to give everybody extra melee attack, and suddenly that Death Star becomes pretty scary, I think, so we'll see. Possibly some really good synergy there. And uh, yeah, they've also got access to fell bats. nothing special there. Deck droppers are essentially big fell bats carrying the zombies. I know a lot of people were saying that maybe they were gonna like drop them off and then leave. It does seem like they're actually just an air uh, skirmish unit. It says here flying missile cab. Uh, they come equipped with a rifle. They also have a bomber variant. And uh, yeah, and there's the deck gunners. So these are the guys with the sort of there's like a, a dude holding a gun, and I think there was like another zombie behind him carrying ammo or something. But uh, essentially, these are like a weapon team. They have long range, armor piercing, and a shield breaker effect. 
So uh, probably a pretty high damage unit. I'd imagine this is going to be sort of similar to how the Warplock Gisales will work when they eventually get uh, uh, made for the Skaven. Um, but yeah, we've also got a couple of artillery pieces here. Carronade is essentially an Empire Cannon, and a Mortar is essentially an Empire Mortar, obviously. But uh, keep in mind again, though, that these guys all have that extra Powder Special Rule, and you can also take a Gunnery White to stand around and replenish their ammo. So, um, you know, potentially more powerful, I would say, than the Empire, uh, you know, their Empire cousins. We'll have to see. The Empire, unfortunately, doesn't have their engineer to really give them the missile buffs that they had in Tabletop. So, you know, hopefully we see the Empire engineer added it as a character later on down the line, but that's totally besides the point here. Um, in terms of the, uh, the Vampire Coast, they're certainly going to be a powerful artillery faction, as I said before. Powerful missiles in general. We've also got the Bloated Corpse. Now, this is a, an essentially a bomb unit. So it's a unique amongst all rosters uh, self-destructing unit. Um, it's pretty quick and it will explode upon contact with enemy or when its HP falls below a certain threshold. And its explosion will cause massive damage to all nearby units, especially bunched up infantry it says here. But uh, you know, f friendly, unfriendly, doesn't matter. So potentially it's going to be an interesting kind of skill shot mechanic where if you try and focus it down really hard, you know, you might be able to blow it up in your opponent's ranks, or, you know, if, if uh, otherwise you could just, like, throw a, you know, a meat shield unit, you know, let, like, let's say we're playing Vampire Coast versus Vampire Counts, you've got your bloated corpse running in, you just throw some zombies out in front, or summon up some zombies, you know, in its path, potentially, and just have it, you know, blow up, blow them up instead of your higher value units, potentially some counterplay there, so it could be tricky to use, but it all depends on how much damage it actually does. If the damage is worthwhile, you'll still see people trying to throw these guys in, and it could be a very, very fun meme unit uh, regardless. So, uh, we've also got uh, Morngulls. We talked about the hero version, so this is the unit version. Uh, Vanguard stock, um, above average movement speed, but exceptionally fast charge speed. So they, sounds like they have a really fast charge animation. Uh, let's see, resistant to physical damage, but otherwise fairly fragile. Yeah, as I thought, mostly unarmored, it sounds like. Uh, deal substantial, substantial AP damage, uh, possibly anti-infantry, so it sounds like maybe they haven't fully decided on that yet, but uh, regenerate HP in combat, so yeah, due to their hunger ability. So they have the, a lot of vampire characters for the vampire counts currently have that hunger ability, where they regenerate while they're in combat, so it sounds like these guys have the same. Moving on, we've got the animated hulks. These are kind of like the, I call them sea spawn, I think, in, in my video before, but they're like uh, the dudes with the, the crab hands and the cannon hands, and they just, they could kind of look like sea spawn. But uh, they're, they're a heavy, you know, uh, monstrous infantry unit, gonna be good at stopping up your opponent's high mass units. Um, and it says here they're uh, primarily there to screen for missile units. So I'd imagine they'll have some uh, high missile resistance and probably high HP. Uh, it says they also deal high raw damage. So we'll see how their AP values are, whether they're more like, uh, you know, like uh, Crypt Horrors or more like Chaos Spawn. I'm curious to see. But uh, Rotting Prometheans are the crab monstrous infantry. So this is the unit of crabs. Uh, they've got uh, high mass, high armor. They're relatively slow, but they're resistant to missile attacks. So this is going to be, you know, your your defensive wall to keep your opponent from getting into your cookie jar, so to speak. They're going to be, con you know, constantly kind of circling around with their cav, trying to get in on your high value missile units while you're returning fire on them. And then when they try and come in, you have to, you know, block them up with the crabs or with the animated hulks. Um, so that's going to be kind of their role within the roster. And then they also come with a gunnery mob variant. So you, this basically just has some uh, zombies with handguns sitting on top. So they have a, a missile attack. Then there's the rotting leviathan. This is the big boy. High armor, high HP, high mass, uh, high missile resistance. So this is literally a massive crab tank. <laughs> um, has charge defense against all and armor piercing melee attacks. So this is going to be a powerful monster. Um, you know, regardless of its its stats here, if everything that's just said is fulfilled, um, it's going to be tough to deal with for some factions, certainly. And it'll be great to kind of sit in your your uh, 
your back line just to act as a distraction card effect. So once your opponent gets close enough, you run it forward, you know, so they, they have to deal with it. Otherwise, it's just going to raffle stomp most of their army. Um, but at the same time, you know, you're, you have other missile units that are shooting at them while they're trying to deal with it. And anyway, I could potentially see quite a few different uses for this unit. Um, especially, again, with access to some of the best lores of magic in the game, lore of vampires. Uh, we'll see how lore of, how good lore of deeps is, but just with lore of vampires, if they just had lore of vampires, that would still make these guys incredibly powerful. Because, again, lore of vampires is the best lore of magic in the game, <laughs> at least currently. Um, then, of course, we've got the Necrofex Colossus. This is the big, uh, you know, kind of transformer dude with the, sh the cannon hands. Um, large claw and four cannons strapped together, uh, able to move and fire, and it ha uh, rarely gets line of sight blocked, obviously, because it's quite tall. Uh, hybrid ranged melee unit, uh, five riders equipped with rifles, so I'd imagine that uh, similar to the Iraq rocket, it'll have, you know, guys shooting off the back, but probably armor piercing damage, which is very powerful. And it's able to summon a unit of zombie deckhands, so that could potentially be interesting, you know, if you get caught out and you need some uh, chaff support. Uh, just drop a unit of zombie deckhands. We'll see exactly how that summon mechanic works, but uh, they've also got access to a Death Shriek Terrorgeist, which is, you know, obviously just a Terrorgeist. Um, not a lot to say about the unit itself, but the fact that it's included in the roster means that it does give the Vampire Coast some air power, and quite some powerful air power at that. Terrorgeist currently in the meta are very, very popular with the Vampire Counts, and so, you know, you could potentially maybe even see some rush builds with like a ton of zombie pole arms. Uh, you know, like, let's say Harkon with two more Terror Geists up in the air. You have a vampire hero with lore of vampires on the ground. And maybe you just bring a ton of crabs and hulks and maybe a couple bombs. And, you know, you just go with a very rush-centric build. Uh, it's possible that could work. I will see. But certainly the inclusion of the Terror Geist means you have that, you know kind of sniping power, and as well, when your opponent, if you choose to go with a very ranged heavy build, you have that one kind of elite mobile unit to, to circle around and try and zone in on large, you know, fast targets that are compromising positions. So, potentially a very powerful inclusion. And then we, finally, we've got Queen Bess. So this is the uh, huge cannon that you guys have been seeing in the background there. Uh, Probably the biggest unit model in the game. We'll have to see. I'm going to do a comparison and just stick a mammoth right next to it and just see which one's bigger because that thing is massive. I mean, we'll see. I'm not 100% sure this thing will even make it into multiplayer depending on how just brokenly powerful it actually is. Uh, I hope it does just because it's a cool unit and it certainly seems like it could be balanced depending on how powerful it actually is. You know, there's a lot of the, the, that goes into missile units like projectile speed, um, you know, obviously the missile damage, the area of effect, uh, the arc of fire. They did say on this it has a parabolic arc of fire, so similar to a mortar, you can't hide behind terrain like with direct line of fire artillery. Um, monstrous impact causes movement penalties to target so it sounds like it actually has a bound ability beyond just probably having an immense stagger effect probably even uh, we'll see we'll see if it even staggers big monsters like Kolek and you know like uh, Stegodons things like that because those monsters do have stagger animations but we'll see if this uh, this artillery piece can actually consistently stagger them but it sounds like it has an actual movement penalty like a movement speed effect we'll see if that's actually true but it does have a slow reload speed no surprise there and I love this this dead zombie just like his heads on backwards just like slumped over like <laughs> uh, truly amazing so that's pretty much it for the roster reveal in terms of tactics I'm already been kind of been talking about a few different builds that I think could potentially work I mean obviously you're gonna see the very defensive almost dwarf style of play but with monsters where you have a few mobile kind of heavy monsters rather than thick blocks of infantry but the definitely the emphasis on armor piercing missiles especially with that extra powder rule and the gunnery whites replenishing your ammo it's going to be a rough faction um to deal with you know if if 
if you're uh, not great at assaulting missile positions, and people who are good at setting up like overlapping lines of fire and good at uh, prior like target prioritization, uh, you know, like people who play the dwarves a lot, or even the Empire to a degree, or like the Tomb Kings, there are some other powerful missile factions, certainly. But I think this is going to be one of the most powerful missile factions. We'll have to see. I mean, obviously, all these zombies are zombies, so we'll see how inaccurate they actually are, and like the artillery pieces and so on. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I may have to devise some kind of test uh, to see the uh, once we get access to it the um, accuracy, like of the Empire cannon, for example, versus the the carronades. Which one is actually more accurate? But um, regardless, I mean, the the amount of armor-piercing missiles here just means that through sheer volume of fire, you're going to be landing hits, and uh, you know the fact that you have the high mass units uh, to stop up the enemy means that hopefully they'll be viable. The, they could run into a similar issue to the Skaven, where they don't... I mean, the Skaven have less monstrous units, so I don't see that it necessarily um, would be as much of an issue for them, and it also seems like the Vampire Coast monstrous units um, are much more durable. Obviously, the, the Skaven only have Rat Ogres and, like, the Hellpit Abomination and the Doom Wheel, um, as well as the, the heroic kind of cart units. Um, as their high mass units, but these guys have like, you know, a couple different variants of monstrous infantry, a couple large single model monsters, um, including the Terrorgeist, you know, you've got your Necrofex, you've got your Big Crab, you've got your Unit of Crabs, um, the Morn Ghouls as well kind of provide you another option there, although I doubt you would really want to be sending Morn Ghouls, Morn Ghouls against Cav, we'll see. But regardless, it should be a very interesting roster and a unique playstyle, sitting somewhere in between like Skaven, Tomb Kings, Vampire Counts, Empire, and Dwarfs, I guess? As that's a pretty unique, I would say, but uh, very much different from the Vampire Counts, and uh, uh, yeah. It definitely seems to be a unique faction. I mean, obviously, we'll have to see. A lot of this comes down to how the power curve for the various units play out. Inevitably, there will be some units that will probably be a little bit more cost-effective than others in terms of how their actual stats are at public release. So I uh, don't want to dive too far into it right now, but in, just in terms of some rough theory crafting, I, I could potentially see some rush builds working out, uh, making heavy use of that Dance Macabre and Invocation of Nehek. Um, the fact that they have access to Lore of Vampires makes them an incredibly powerful faction and this guy right here good good way to send us out uh, the gunnery white providing that extra powder buff um, you know with the replenishing ammo I am very curious to see how that particular mechanic plays out and yeah we'll have to see this has been uh, pretty much it for now. Again, go watch the full roster reveal and check out the post as well if you want more info. Uh, I'm sure I've missed something here or there, and you guys will correct me in the comments down below. But uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did find this useful and informative, be sure to share it with your friends. Uh, yeah, thanks again, and we'll see you next time.